Greetings, members, one and all of the Salivation Nation. Gold doubles down on gains, and silver makes a little bit of a recovery as well on a weaker dollar and a pretty bullish stock market. Let's explore! Yes, indeed, this comes to us from Market Watch. We can see by the bulletin here that the Dow has gained over 400 points. The stock finishes uh, sharply higher after a three day sell off. So that's good news in some way, but it's really kind of surface good news because, again, as we know, most of the stock market is essentially propped up by liquidity from the Fed. But uh, nonetheless, it is interesting indeed on this headline here. Uh, the dollar has uh, lost a little bit of strength. Uh, some fear this could lead to a deflationary thing if it continues away. But we'll see how it points out. But nonetheless, gold and silver do react, uh, certainly positively, to a weaker dollar. Gold futures climbed Wednesday to tally a second straight session gain, finding support as the strength of the euro pressured the U.S. dollar boosting the dollar-denominated metals appeal. The move for gold came even as benchmark U.S. stock indexes staged a recovery from a technology-inspired downturn that took the broader market to its lowest levels in weeks and the NASDAQ composite into correction territory, which was up 2.71%, according to MarketWatch here. Gold and silver prices had been under some pressure of late, uh, due, among other things, to concerns over a slower recovery in demand, but mainly because of the rebound in the U.S. dollar, said Fawad uh, Razakzada, market analyst at Think Markets. However, as bond yields have remained low, the selling pressure for gold and silver have not been too strong. Investors remain hopeful that an effective vaccine will soon become available and convinced that, in any case, central banks and governments will be ready to provide more stimulus and debase their currencies, he said in a market update. And boy, isn't that the truth. It's like, it's like printing money out of style, you know, and, and we have the hubris that we can do it even more because we are the, the top dollar, so to speak, of the breadbasket of world currencies. Um, against this backdrop, gold and silver remain fundamentally supported. And I do agree with that, especially gold. December gold rose $11.70 or 0.6% to settle at $1,954.90 an ounce after trading as low as $1,926.30. Keep in mind that it was $1,920 or thereabouts. That was a previous record high in 2011. And so far, gold has held its own, matching that record uh, per uh, nominal dollars uh, since that time period. But it has not reached it as far as nominal, as far as uh, real inflation adjusted dollars. Prices, which rose 0.5% uh, on Tuesday, marked the highest, most active contract settlement since the 1st of September according to fact set data. December silver arose 0.87%, meanwhile added 9 cents or 0.3% at $27.08 an ounce, following a 1% gain in the previous session. Let's pause right now and take a look and see where they were before. Uh, let's refresh this page here. We can see uh, that gold is up substantially here. Uh, silver is comfortably above that $27 mark, even in the bid price there. Um, and, but keep in mind, silver uh, still has a ways to go. The gold to silver ratio is still at, at a pretty high level considering where gold is and how its performance has been in this uh, a market, what we've been seeing with a, a full-blown recession going on right now. It's at 72.11 to 1. The dollar weakened as measured by the ICE dollar index, down 0.21%, which fell by 0.2% to 93.275 as the euro rose toward session highs after Bloomberg News reported that some policymakers of the European Central Bank have some more confidence 
in their economic forecast. The story, citing sources familiar with the matter, comes ahead of the ECB decision on Thursday when new staff forecasts are due. Expectations are growing among analysts that the European Central Bank will provide a dovish assessment of the economy and in doing so trigger speculation that more QE would be on the way later in the year, says Razak Zada. If so, gold and silver should benefit on the back of potentially more weakness for European bond yields. And other metals traded on the COMEX Wednesday, December copper attacked on 0.9% and platinum rose 1.67% uh, to $924.90 an ounce and palladium was up a little bit as well, $2,318.20 an ounce. Platinum palladium is still holding its own for sure on this. And here we have a story by... Um, Kitco, Jim Wyckoff, tells us how gold and silver gain is early loss is seen as buying opportunity. And uh, it's a solid rebound in the U.S. stock market. A weaker U.S. dollar index at midday is also working in favor of the precious metals bulls. Uh, still, the gold and silver bulls need a positive fundamental spark to break prices out of the recent sideways trading ranges. October gold futures were last up $12.30 and $1,947.40. December Comex Silver went last up um, about $0.11 cents at $27.10 an ounce. Global stock, global stock markets were mixed overnight. European shares were mostly up and Asian shares mostly down. The marketplace is presently shrugging off news that AstraZeneca has halted its COVID-19 vaccine trials because one person in the trial contracted an unexpected illness. Temporarily halting such trials is not uncommon, experts said. Uh, the other uh, important outside market news sees NYMEX crude oil prices solidly higher and trading around $38.25 on a corrective bounce following sharp losses recently. It talks about the yield. Trades her 10-year and note is trading around 0.67%. And there's some technical analysis there, but... By and large, this is what we're seeing. The markets are reacting. Um, gold and silver, all the metals are up, save for rhodium, which is flat, but still kind of doesn't count among the other metals as far as, you know, acting the, as a hedge. It's a very, very much a fringe precious metal out there. But there it is. It is fascinating to see where the markets are going. And gold and silver reacting up pretty healthily. And as we see here, silver, as I mentioned, and I continue to say silver is a more volatile metal, in this case, uh, almost doubling the performance of gold. And when it loses, silver loses big. When gold goes down, silver goes down even more, which is why, though I encourage people to stack silver, I strongly encourage them to accumulate gold as a balance to silver when it performs. Um, you know, because it's the more stable, it's the ultimate hedge against economic instability. And that's what it's about. We want stability. Now we do base things on price. The paradigm shift is, is the dollar is losing the value when gold and silver goes up. And uh, when gold and silver goes down, well, the dollar is essentially, um, well, it's gaining strength. But we don't, and most of us in the stacking community kind of don't see it that way, only maybe for the short term. But in the long term, and by design by the Federal Reserve, the dollar devalues by 2% each year, and now 2.5. They're okay with that now from a previous video I posted about how the Federal Reserve is okay with increased inflation now. Well, as far as I'm concerned, we're not okay with gold and silver losing value, but we understand that really they maintain its value through the long course of history. Uh, they really do. Um, they've stood the test of time, whereas currencies do not. Um, currencies and nations and empires and alike. So that's why we hold the precious metals. So there you go. Interesting day indeed today. And we'll see how things play out as we get closer to a new vaccine or a vaccine and the election. I think those two things are going to play pivotal roles in where the precious metal prices go one way or the other in the coming weeks and months ahead. So I'd like to extend a multitude of gratitude to you all for taking the time to watch this video and encourage you to please rate, share, comment, 
and subscribe.